because nutrition plays a crucial role during this phase of life. Thousand days, if you see this phase of life, and good nutrition in the first one thousand days lays the foundation for health, development, and even prosperity for the next generations. So the first one thousand days between pregnancy and the child's uh, second uh, birthday are most critical time for positive impact on child's uh, cognitive and the physical development. The health and well-being of pregnant mothers, lactating women is directly connected to the growth and health of uh, her infants. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a very special guest with us, uh, Dr. Sujit Ranjan, who is an associate director, nutrition at Tata Trusts, heading the nutrition portfolio within the organization. He has been associated with the public health sector for more than two decades. His experience includes large-scale program management, policy advocacy, and partnership management. Prior to this, Dr. Sujit has worked as executive director with Collision for Food and Nutrition Security. as a director at care india and chief operating officer at swasthya management research institute hyderabad he has also undergone international fellowship program on visionary leadership and has also undertaken the international fellowship on leadership at the center for african family studies nairobi kenya and with the nfpcb government of indonesia jakarta it's a pleasure to have you with us sir thank you so much for joining us today thank you very much thank you Thank you. So, before we even begin with the interaction today, sir, tell us a little bit about yourself. How you came into the social space? Yeah. So, thank you very much uh, for giving me an opportunity to be part of uh, this today's program. As uh, you have already um, uh, explained about my background, my career. So, I'm a public health professional and uh, currently with uh, associated with Tata Trust. and uh, by choice i am in this public health sector and uh, i got an opportunity to be a part of a long term association with india's uh, one of the largest nutrition and health program that is uh, inhp integrated nutrition and health program that was implemented in seven states uh, in partnership with government of india state government and uh, civil society organizations i also got an opportunity to uh, be a part of uh, one of the largest program uh, of government of india and government of uk that was the health sector reform program so uh, i'm i'm uh, i'm really grateful that uh, the learning which i am having from all the lar- large scale program are very useful in our today's uh, um, nutrition program public health program and with the help of uh, our uh, civil society organizations uh, the state government we are definitely uh, looking for a change and we are confident that we will make a difference yeah uh, you, you know the recent data from the national family health survey 5 which was in the 2019 to 21 it shows that roughly 31st 35% of children under the age of 5 are affected by stunting in india and malnutrition mm-hmm. has been a major challenge for india despite several you know efforts in this direction now in order to make a sustainable impact uh, please tell us what our approach should be yeah this is a, this is a very good question and uh, as you are very much aware india's greatest national treasure is our children and child malnutrition remains a major threat to the survival growth and development of of the child the data from national family health survey 5 reveals that india should more than ever focus on nutrition and it has not fared well and malnutrition is a complex condition that can involve multiple factors and based on national family uh, family health survey data uh, the recent data Uh, it clearly says that a more focused approach is needed on the ground to tackle crisis both uh, uh, nutrition sensitive and nutrition specific both so sensitive like all the social issues whether it's related with the status of women the early marriages early pregnancy the low birth weight baby and the water and sanitation women's status and the uh, education so there are many uh, social factors are also there 
and you mention about stunting which causes uh, irreversible physical and mental damage to the child so it's a very uh, it's a very uh, important and the challenging uh, thing for all public health professionals as well as the state government and the national government and poverty is not the only cause of a stunting as there are many factors many causes are associated with that and stunting starts uh, like for um, it's very important to understand that stunting starts from the pre conception when an adolescent girl who later became a mother is uh, undernourished and anemic and it worsen when the infants the child diets are poor and when the sanitation and hygiene are inadequate the most important is uh, it is irreversible by the age of 2 so this is the punch line i can say and the malnutrition is the universal public health problem in both children and adult globally and it is not only a public health concern i should say rather it is an impediment to poverty eradication productivity and the economic growth of any nation or any state like in tata trust by partnering with the other stakeholders such as non profit our organizations philanthropic organizations private organizations and driving a number of varied interventions and all aimed at improving india's nutrition parameters that trust are working towards achieving the large scale sustainable impact in in the fight against malnutrition our goals are very clearly aligned with the un sustainable development goal 2 that's the eradicating hunger helping the country helping the community helping the program achieve food security and improve nutrition and promoting sustainable agriculture so uh, you uh, there are many important approaches uh, like system strengthening how system can be strengthened the capacity of the functionaries from uh, especially the front line workers mid level managers uh, the evidence generation the behavior change communication very effective behavior change communication um, area wise the community wise so that we can get the best uh, result and the multi sectoral coordination because uh, as i mentioned this is a multi dimensional issues nutrition it cannot be sorted out by one uh, department or one organization or one um, efforts rather uh, and the data based governance the engagement of community based organizations convergence are the important pillars to address uh, the malnutrition and the approaches are needed engagement of all our uh, community based organizations like self help groups uh, local panchayat they are playing an important role to monitor the program to demand the nutrition services and at the same time to ensure that the quality services are reaching to the our target population so these are the approaches are very relevant and tata trust strategy for combating malnutrition so now the trust strategy for combating malnutrition is an integrated approach and that uh, focuses on three fundamental aspects number one uh, ensuring adequate nutrition among communities and the uh, promote optimal growth and mitigate uh, health risk uh, among the our children and the mothers and the two is the strengthening existing nutrition program so uh, and the third uh, that's the very important like providing recommendations and data back advocacy to policy makers decision makers program leaders by developing research based um product and the extended technology support and the data analysis too that will that is helping to tackle the challenges in meeting the nutrition goals in the country so that's the approach we are having thank you so much sir for sharing that i mean like throughout the conversation basically what we understood is that you know uh, like addressed as a subject in itself it needs a holistic uh, you know approach one needs to look at the wash facilities available for the communities you know the educational facilities available for the community so there are a lot of interventions that go hand in hand with when you're working on the nutrition subject 
you know like uh, yeah. the next question is about the 1000 days uh, you know uh, of nutrition for the children why is nutrition for children and mothers in the first 1000 days of birth important and how is it linked to the poverty cycle and holistic development of children so uh, this is uh, this question is very close to me and uh, very close to uh, all public health professional because nutrition plays a crucial role during this phase of life thousand days if you are saying this phase of life and good nutrition in the first 1000 days lays the foundation for health development and even prosperity for the next generations so the first 1000 days between pregnancy and the child's uh, second uh, birth day are most critical time for positive impact on child's cognitive and the physical development the health and well being uh, of a pregnant mothers lactating women is directly connected to the growth and health of uh, her infants and uh, we we know this fact very well that the first 1000 days can be seen uh, as a combination of five stages so five stages means uh, the number one the nine months of pregnancy that's the antenatal period then the uh, birth uh, uh, birth passes or the delivery process that's the intranatal period then the four weeks uh, that is the neonatal period and the 11 months of uh, then the next is the 11 months of uh, infancy and finally the chunk uh, is the post first birthday until 2 years uh, when the child is weaned from the breast and transitions to eating solids solid food so that's the uh, and all these critical phases of development it managed well reduce the risk of uh, falling in the trap of any forms of malnutrition whether it's stunting underweight or wasting any forms of malnutrition and malnutrition can decrease uh, the economic growth uh, of a nation due to loss of productivity caused by reduced uh, schooling and cognitive uh, impairment so this phase uh, is important for all the programs all the public health professionals and it's important that how uh, the community the our uh, how uh, we can reach out to every individual every family every household and let them know the importance of this 1000 days so that's the priority of um, for me for tata trust as well as for the state and the national government and both uh, adequate um, overall nutrition and provision of adequate amounts uh, um, of key micro and micronutrients so it's uh, because the uh, this is the phase when the child is moving from the exclusive breastfeeding to the complementary feeding so adequate and overall nutrition uh, like the um, this uh, quantity quality frequency of the uh, complementary feeding and the key macro or the micronutrients during these first 1000 phase is necessary for normal brain development therefore nutrition and uh, care received during first 1000 days that they start from the women's pregnancy until the child's second birthday often uh, like we 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 always say that this is a unique window opportunity to shape a healthier future so uh, that's the that is why this is the important for each one of us like how we can ensure and how a mother can understand a family can understand about the importance and this is the uh, this will lead to a holistic uh, development of the child very true sir thank you so much for sharing your insights on that uh, you mentioned about the micronutrients and macronutrients which i guess are also linked to the concept of hidden hunger so my next question is on that uh, what is hidden hunger and what role does micronutrients play in addressing the problem of malnutrition and hunger okay so as uh, i was uh, hmm. i was you know, talking about the macro and micro nutrients so the hidden hidden hunger also known as uh, micronutrient deficiencies the hidden hunger due to micronutrient deficiency 
does not produce hunger. Like when I'm saying does not produce hunger, that means we know it very well that we, you might not feel it uh, in the belly, but uh, it uh, strives at the core of your health and vitality. And it affects, uh, can be uh, devastating, leading to mental uh, impairment, poor health, uh, low productivity, and even, you know, like uh, child mortality. So it adverse effect uh, on child health and survival are particularly acute, especially within the first 1000 days of a child's life from conception to the age of two and resulting in a serious physical and uh, cognitive uh, consequences. Even mild to moderate deficiencies can affect a person's well-being and development. So that's why this is very, uh, this uh, hidden hunger, the micronutrient deficiencies are very, very crucial. And the women and children have greater need of micronutrients. The nutritional need of uh, women around the time of conception and during the pregnancy has longer term effect for fetal growth and development. Interventions to fight hidden hunger and improve nutrition outcomes generally focus on nutrition, generally like the focus on nutrition and infants and the young child. And by targeting these populations, uh, intervention achieve high rates of return by improving health, uh, nutritional status, then the, um, uh, even the latter part of the life. And most commonly, if uh, you and me uh, can understand, most commonly recognize micronutrient deficiencies across all ages in order to prevalence are caused by, uh, by lack of uh, uh, iodine, lack of iron, lack of zinc. Less common, less common, or but the very very significant, I, I should say, from a public health point, is vitamin A deficiency. Apart from that, then the low index uh, of other essential micronutrients such as calcium, vitamin D, and the vitamin B, and um, uh, such as the folate, are also very common. So poor diet is a common source of hidden hunger. Poor, that's the, that's the understanding and that's the reality. And many of these deficiencies are preventable. It's not like we can't, can't prevent. They're preventable through uh, nutrition education, nutrition education to the mothers, to the family, and uh, consumption of a healthy diet containing diverse food as well as the food fortification and supplementation where needed, wherever that is needed, that is uh, already government of India is uh, um, committed to provide the fortified food through take-home ration uh, to all the mothers, pregnant lactating mothers, children below three years, they are, that is the commitment. At the same time, the midday meal. So the fortification of uh, uh, commonly eaten staple food is a proven and high cost uh, effective strategy for prevention and control of uh, vitamins and mineral deficiencies. That's the micronutrient deficiencies. Very well said, sir. Uh, like, you know, like even uh, what I have understood from the conversation is this, that it's just not limited to, you know, the marginalized groups, but hidden hunger is a problem in mass in India. You know, like people like us, people like you and me, we could also have the micronutrient and micro, you know, macronutrient deficiencies. But as you said, we do not feel it in our belly, right? So I mean, like at a larger scale, it's a problem for everyone in the country and a huge awareness is needed around all of these areas. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And it's important, uh, like uh, how uh, the uh, service providers are in a position to... Uh, Consult the family, consult the mothers, consult the parents, and at the same time, how every household, the, the parents, the family are aware about these micronutrients. And I'm saying like uh, there are many initiatives like Nutri Garden, your kitchen garden, your um, uh, like um, uh, easily uh, most effective rice fortification, double fortified salt. They can provide the um, uh, the gap, and uh, we can uh, we can see a kind of uh, a healthy generation, uh, like 
current and as well as the future. Very true, sir. Very true. Now, sir, family is the first institution of learning for each one of us, right? That's where our learning begins. Uh, so, you know, do you think that nutrition should be made the core pillar of family planning in India? And how will it contribute towards improving the nutri nutritional landscape of the country? First of all, I will say yes. Nutrition, there is a, there is a big, like if you say there is a big uh, relation between family planning and the nutrition. And um, like enough, there are enough evidences that suggest uh, that the strong linkages between uh, family planning and nutrition outcomes. When um, like uh, when uh, intervals between the births are too short and mothers may be at risk of uh, undernutrition, then the poor maternal nutrition leads to poor birth outcomes. So it's directly related. And short pregnancy intervals are associated with increased risk of infants being born preterm or the small child, a small for gestational period, gestational age, and with low birth weight. All these, all those things which are associated with the key indicators of childhood uh, undernutrition, including vesting, stunting, underweight, and anemia. And the spacing uh, births are too closely, can also affect uh, nutrition outcomes uh, of all children in the family. You are very much aware that uh, the adolescent pregnancy can result in uh, adverse nutritional outcomes for both the mother and the fetus with increased risk of uh, adverse uh, perinatal outcomes such as preterm birth as i mentioned and uh, the integrate the integrating nutrition like uh, your question i'm, I'm just uh, i'm relating to one of my uh, work uh, in a couple of years back uh, like how integrating nutrition in family planning in a structured manner will be a game changer. In this country, in India, this, is, this will be a game changer and uh, this will be a kind of adolescent girls have uh, the, um, the um, uh, urgent uh, or unmeet family planning and nutrition needs. That's the, there in our country. Second, integrating family planning and nutrition increase reach and impact. Then the nutrition and family planning interventions are mutually reinforcing. And the integration, nutrition, and family planning not only makes sense uh, uh, like uh, from the delivery efficiency, but mutually reinforcing health outcomes as well. So it's not only just uh, uh, only the nutritional status, rather uh, how, we are, um, how we are providing an opportunity to the mother and the family so that they will they will live uh, happily and the next generation will be very, very healthy in our country. And by integrating nutrition into family planning program, we can achieve healthier pregnancies. We can definitely, we can achieve the healthier pregnancies and the birth outcomes and reduce rate of, uh, as I mentioned, stunting, wasting, and, uh, and uh, child, uh, infant and maternal mortality also. So that's why, uh, uh, this is uh, very close to uh, me and very close to my work. And uh, this is the need of the hour in the country. And this will be a get, game changer once again. I say. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing that. Uh, moving on to our last question for the interview today. What role does innovation and collective efforts play towards addressing the problem of malnutrition, especially in a world that has been adversely affected by COVID-19? Yeah, so uh, COVID-19 has uh, brought many challenges for the smooth functioning of uh, many programs, including nutrition program. But uh, I must say that it has also brought out uh, the fact that many program activities can actually be conducted in a, in a different manner and the, in a cost-effective manner also. 
that is yet to uh, productive and uh, uh, while we are uh, already adapting the new normal adopted also in uh, in the new this is the new normal and so we are uh, so the programs are also moving in that in the same direction for the new normal can be there we will still exploring many ways uh, to make our programs work in the kind of uh, this scenario the information technology is being leveraged by ensuring uh, many services related to maternal and child health and nutrition the um, the frontline workers like our asha worker anganwadi workers anms are also using uh, like mobile contacts uh, for many families uh, and they are connecting to them for all kinds of counseling the mobile health services uh, uh, is being used for remote advisory health services the uh, uh, the portion helpline number uh, that is also being achieved uh, being achieved like uh, in many parts of the country for availing or ensuring healthcare uh, immunization services and the regular counseling through uh, nutrition specialist in the recent days uh, like nutri garden portion vatika is being largely promoted so that the mothers can participate in income generation activities and hence cater to the nutrition of their child and themselves so uh, even with uh, so much of negativity and there is a silver line for uh, this sector public health sector which will make the country stronger and make it own place much relevant in the in the coming days the i i must say that the crisis has brought us uh, together again with more focused deliverables and the objectives to make india a, a stronger country and how we should learn managing its uh, the technology the human resource uh, and also how we can reach out to the target population in a more uh, effective manner and i i must say that uh, covid 19 has given us a unique opportunity to reform our public health uh, sector and a strong public health sector and the system will benefit everyone and there is no better time than now to make it uh, a reality like whether it's a public uh, uh, boosting the public private partnership uh, building the data culture engage the community in a more effective manner engage private health care services uh, and invest in public health so with the uh, while the pandemic this uh, covid 19 pandemic uh, was a bigger challenge i am very much optimistic that we can make a difference uh, the way we are committed the way we have come together thank you so much sir for sharing it so beautifully i mean like of course uh, uh, covid has really taught us to come together and work together in order to achieve something and create impact on ground uh, this interaction has been really really insightful sir thank you so much for bringing your expertise on this platform it was a pleasure to have you with us uh, we really look forward to continue to working with you my pleasure and i am very happy that uh, we discussed on all this uh, important issues related with public health nutrition and i am confident with the help of you and with the help of all our like minded organizations people the government we will make a difference and we will make this country a healthier country We'll Thank you very much. We definitely will, sir. We definitely will. Wish you all the very best for your endeavors, sir. Hope to stay connected with you. Thank you so much for Thanks joining for us. Thanks for your time.